I know we like to think that people are out to get us sometimes, but what if your cleaning lady was literally trying to steal your life? Or for some of us, imagine having a cleaning lady. Well, this is 2018's The Cleaning Lady. Spoiler alert, while I might be giving you my opinion on the film, that's no substitute for watching it for yourself. Links to the film are in the description. And for those of you that need to hear this, this is just a movie. All stunts are for the sake of story and shouldn't be attempted on your own. Viewer discretion is advised. No animals were harmed in the making of this movie. And with that, we open up on a mouse falling into a trap. And I swear I almost soiled myself in that trap shot. Definitely not expecting that. Wow. I also wasn't expecting anyone to be putting mice in a blender, but here we are. Then we cut to Alice talking to Michael about one of her recurring dreams. They lie in bed as she tells him about a dream of her being pulled underwater, but then she wakes up. He asks her what she thinks it means, but she has no idea. Michael decides that he's going to take her away for a vacation, and they decide to go to Italy. Alice doesn't seem too convinced that they'll follow through on this, but Michael assures her that they will this time. Later, Alice calls someone about coming for some maintenance, and then she sits down to eat breakfast. Later, Alice goes to her support group, and we find out that she's a love addict. First of all, I didn't know being a love addict was a thing. Is that real? Like, sex addict, but for emotions? But that makes way more sense why she seemed so awkward with her husband. It wasn't her husband. Alice tells the group that she absolutely loves Michael, but she knows that he'll never leave his family. She admits that she needs to leave him and start her own life, and her sponsor Miranda hugs her. They agree that Alice won't make contact with Michael again, and they go their separate ways. When Alice gets home, she gets a phone call from Michael, and she denies the call. You go, girl. Then she hears water draining in her bathroom, and she decides to investigate the sound. She finds Shelly there, and she's removed the hair from her pipes. Once Alice realizes that she's there for the maintenance issues, she seems a little more relieved. But Shelly's a bit more shy. Shelly goes on to show her a dead rat that she found, and Alice is thankful for her for removing it. I have to give Alice credit here. Shelly's obviously wary about her appearance, but Alice doesn't seem to pay it any attention. Alice is a gem. Alice asks Shelly if she'd mind cleaning her house on the side, and they strike an agreement for two days a week. After that, Shelly goes on her way. Later, Alice is getting ready for her next client, and the doorbell rings. She finds a huge box sitting outside, and when she opens it, she finds a big suitcase inside. That's sneaky Michael. During Alice's appointment, they head to the kitchen to rinse off her mask, and Alice's client is scared when she picks her head up to find Shelly waiting to clean. Naturally, Alice tries to introduce the two of them, but the client briskly walks out. After that, Alice tells Shelly what she would like to have cleaned, and Shelly gets at it. Alice takes a nice warm bath, and Shelly notices all of Alice's makeup products on her vanity table. Then, Shelly spies on Alice through the bathroom door. After the bath, Alice heads to the bathroom to paint her nails, and she notices Shelly watching her while cleaning. Just then, she checks her messages to find that Michael has been texting her non-stop. She sends him a simple reply, and he calls her. No, Alice. She answers it. Then Michael tells her all of the things he's planned for them in Italy, and he's swindling her. Then he gets her to let him over after he gets off work. Oh, classic narcissist. After hanging up, Alice calls Miranda to try and get her to help her stay strong, but Miranda's busy with the kids. So Alice turns to Shelly, who's vacuuming in the living room. Alice asks Shelly if she'd like to stay for dinner, and during dinner, Shelly swallows it down without taking a breath. Alice takes this chance to get to know Shelly better, and Shelly decides to explain the burns on her face. She tells Alice that there was an accident that ended up burning her face and a little bit of her neck, but she assures her that everything else is okay. Suddenly, Michael comes to the door, and Alice has Shelly keep quiet until Michael finally goes away. Shelly seems like a pure soul inside. When she finds out about Alice's little misadventures, she just says that's not right. She's pure. Don't make her the villain. After explaining everything, Alice asks Shelly to stay and watch a movie, but Alice falls asleep. When Shelly goes to leave, Alice wakes up and offers to drive her home. During the drive, Alice thanks Shelly for the evening, and she's glad to make a new friend in her. Shelly tells Alice that she looks like a Barbie, and Alice tells her that it's really just makeup. She offers to show her how to put on makeup, but Shelly has her stop the car. Shelly tells her that she can walk from there, and she gets out of the car without another word. Alice watches as she walks into the woods and she heads home herself. Later, we see Shelly in her rundown home, and she looks over a pearl necklace that she stole from Alice's apartment. She tries it on and looks at herself in the mirror before heading to the fridge to grab the mouse puree. Then she heads to a nearby container that she unlocks, and she sets the bowl down inside. She tells whatever's in there to eat, and she sits down to wait. Then, some woman that Shelly's chained up in the container crawls over and starts slurping on the nasty contents. 
Ugh, this is nasty. And obviously they're making Shelly the villain, of course. I was really hoping that she'd just be a misunderstood character. The next day, Alice goes to her Pilates class, and when she leaves, she gets a call from Michael. Sneaky, sneaky Michael. Michael sounds a bit desperate here. Then he turns around and tells her to wait three years until his kid's in college? Three years? Three years in the dark? Yeah, no thank you. While Michael stands outside his house talking to her about money and staying for his son, his wife watches him from inside. Alice stands her ground, and she tells him that she needs to think about herself for once. She hangs up on him, and she heads home. That evening, Shelly comes over to clean, and she notices a new pack of cigarettes are on the table. She asks Alice why she's not quitting, and Alice asks her to throw them out. Shelly turns around and tells Alice that she has to do it herself for it to really work. So Alice comes in and does just that. Shelly tells her that she can be perfect now that she's taken that step, but Alice thinks she's far from that. Then Alice takes Shelly into her room to show her how to put on makeup, and she tells her that she'll make up a whole bag of makeup for her to take home. Alice is an angel. This movie did a good job of establishing characters and their personalities. Alice is a godsend, and I swear that if anything bad happens to her in the end, I'll never watch this movie again. That night, Alice sleeps peacefully in her bed, but what she doesn't see is that Shelly is sitting over her. Then Shelly knocks her out with chloroform. Really? As soon as I say I don't want anything bad to happen, and Shelly goes and knocks her out. Well, she's really not doing anything bad yet. She's actually making a mold of her face, which for some reason feels creepier than if she were to do something bad to her. Then we see a flashback to Shelly's past, and we see her mother trying to doll her up. Shelly really doesn't like living like this, but her mother can't stress enough how much she needs Shelly to get ready. After slapping her, Shelly's mother spots a car pulling up, and she sends her to her room. Shelly plays with her dollhouse until she finally hears the doorbell ring. We then meet Don, who pays her $500 for an hour. A an hour of what? Well, now I feel bad for Shelly again. Also, that better be her mother chained up in that container. How many parents actually do that to their kids? When we cut back to the present, Shelly pulls off her cast of Alice's face, and she leaves. When she gets home, she makes a latex mold of her face, and she polishes it up with some makeup before trying it on. The next day, Alice wakes up and she's really sick for some reason. After canceling one of her clients, she answers the door to find Shelly waiting. Shelly asks her if she wants to watch some TV, but Alice tells her that she doesn't feel good. Shelly really tries to offer to help, but Alice continues to tell her that she just needs to rest. Eventually, Shelly wins, and she comes in to make her tea. While Alice drinks the tea, Michael calls again, and Shelly asks her why he just won't stop. Alice tells her that she honestly has no idea, and she reiterates that she just wants to be alone to rest now. Well, Shelly finally takes the hint, and she heads back to her own home. The next day, Alice heads back to Pilates, and back at her house, Shelly draws a bath while wearing Alice's face. Yeah, look at this and tell me that this isn't unsettling. This is nightmare fuel. Soon after, Alice leaves Pilates, and she finds Michael waiting for her outside. Michael comes in close, and the two of them hold each other. Uh, and she's relapsing. They kiss and hold each other. Go back to your love addicts meeting. Oh wow, things progressed very quickly. They're back at the apartment getting it on. But guess who's watching? The next morning, Alice gets a call from Miranda, and she immediately guesses that Alice is relapsing on her Michael addiction. Miranda tries to get Alice back to the meetings, but Alice isn't sold on the fact that she isn't supposed to be with him. After Alice tries to defend her actions, Miranda decides that she's done trying to help her. She immediately calls her back to apologize. Suddenly, Shelly grabs Alice from behind and knocks her out with chloroform again. Over at Michael's house, his son asks him if he wanted to do anything this weekend, but he gets a text from Alice's phone asking him to come over. His wife asks him if he wants to go look at paint swatches that evening, but he tells her that he has to go back to the office. That night, Michael heads over to Alice's, but his wife follows him in her car. She watches as he pulls into the parking garage of Alice's apartment. Michael heads up to Alice's to find the doors already open. Inside, there are candles lit and music playing in the bedroom. He makes his way down the hallway, and he's attacked by Shelly, who knocks him out with chloroform too. Okay, can anybody get their hands on chloroform? They always make it seem like only killers and kidnappers use it, but literally anyone has access to it. I'm not wanting to use it, I'm just curious. In another flashback, we see that Shelly's mother continues to sell her to men, but Shelly's finally had enough. She attacks one of her visitors, and her mother tries to stand up for her. The man ends up taking his money back and leaves the mother on the floor. When he goes to the kitchen to clean up, Shelly stabs him in the leg with a knife, but he grabs a pot of boiling oil and throws it in her face. Back in the present, we see Alice and Michael are wrapped up with saran wrap, and Alice has a knife wrapped up in her hands. Shelly wakes up both of them, 
and she tells Alice that she has to be the one to end things between her and Michael. She shows her where to stab him, but when Alice doesn't stab him, Shelly grabs a can of hydrofluoric acid and starts burning Michael's leg. Surprised she didn't pour that a little farther up than his thigh. This is also a really twisted way to convince Alice to put Michael out of his misery. Yeah, the acid hurts, but honestly, he'll be okay afterwards. Oh, she poured it onto his junk. Okay, now put him out of his misery. When Alice refuses, Shelly pours the acid down his throat, and Alice finally puts Michael out of his misery. Then Shelly gives Alice a shot, and she sleeps. Shelly packs the body in a suitcase and takes it down to his car. When she drives off, Michael's wife follows until she runs out of gas. It turns out that she followed Shelly all the way to her property. Shelly takes Alice into her house and leaves her in the bathtub, and then she takes more mouse remains to the container outside. We get to go back and see Shelly and her mother as they talk about her taking clients when her skin heals. And Shelly finally tells her mother that she won't do it anymore. Oh my god, Shelly's mother goes out and gets scissors from the kitchen to threaten to cut Shelly's tongue out. That's like next level psycho stuff. Sure enough, Shelly impales her mom with the scissors instead. Can't really blame her though. So who's in the container then? Yeah, it's good old mother. Somehow she survived a pair of sewing scissors to what looked like her lungs. When Shelly leaves, she's passed by Michael's wife, and soon another man passes by and agrees to bring her back a can of gas. When he comes back with gas, she asks him if many people live here, but he's not much help with an answer. Once the wife is on her way, she spots Michael's car down a dirt road, and she gets out to investigate. She actually goes inside Shelly's house, and she hears Alice struggling in the bathtub. Just then, Shelly makes it home, and she spots the wife's car outside her house. The wife makes it to the bathroom, and after she finds Alice, she goes to the kitchen to find something to cut her binds. She makes it back to start cutting, but they hear someone coming into the house. The wife asks Alice if she's the other woman, and after thinking about it, she still decides to help her. Once Alice is free, they make a run for the door, but Shelly beats the wife with a shovel. I love and hate when innocent bystanders are the ones that really get to suffer. Like, the wife already suffered enough for Michael cheating, then she makes the moral decision to save the other woman, but then she still ends up getting beaten to death with a shovel. Meanwhile, Alice creeps around the house and makes it to the same door without a scratch on her. Life just isn't fair. Alice makes it to the wife's car, but Shelly's close on her tail. Shelly busts through the car window and gives Alice another shot. Alice crawls out of the car and lies on the ground as Shelly looks over her, then she passes out. When she comes to, she's all dressed up and smooth jazz is playing. She tries to get away, but she quickly finds out that she's chained to the floor in the bedroom. When she looks out the window, she finds Shelly watching her like a Barbie in a dollhouse. And then, the credits roll. This was a great movie. It didn't seem to rely on the classic tropes of other thriller movies, and the backstory was way darker than I originally thought it would be. Excellent. Give it a shot. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.